the ideas that you are very ready for today's topic. We have a, a guest, but first of all, we'll introduce ourselves for those who do not know us, who have never um, met us before and who stumbled on this video. We have the people in the church singles group and page and Instagram and Twitter or on YouTube. Um, so we are all on, on, on all these uh, social media handles. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, we're not going to waste too much time because we have a guest today who is a very busy woman, a pastor's wife, and a person of Madame Titi. Um, she's a friend, she's a colleague, and I've known her as a Christian woman who, through her single life, single days up to marriage, she has stood for the Lord, she has followed the Lord, and she's serving the Lord actively, currently with her husband. And she's going to tell us how she met her husband. You can remember on the group many times you guys have argued and talked about pastors not getting wives. Like ladies don't want to marry pastors. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, but whatever reason, some people think that a full-time pastor cannot cater to their needs. Or maybe they're not the best for them. I don't know the rationale, but... Madam Titi is going to be here. Sister Titi is here to explain to us, encourage you, clear your doubt for you who has been led to a pastor and you have doubts, you are trying to jump out of that relationship, you think it's not the best for you. She is going to tell us how she knew that this man, this pastor, this lovely brother is the right person for her, is her husband and how they've been together for so many years now. They're almost going to 20 years in marriage or more, I think. It's been a while that they've been together, serving the Lord together. And look at her, she's looking good. Is she hungry? Does she look, does she look um, sad? She's looking good. She's going to share with you her experience and give you some advice from a pastor's wife perspective uh, so that you can, you you have from, you, you get to listen from the lion's mouth. So, um, Without wasting too much time, I want to shout out to all our audience, everyone who has joined us so far, has enjoyed these videos. Do well to share this video right now. Start sharing to all your friends. Share to your friends, share to your family members, share to young people, single people, Christian people, people that you know will benefit from this. Somebody's going to learn something from this. Today. I can tell you this. Don't miss this. Share it, share, 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 share. Um, so First, um, uh, Madam Titi, how are you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, I'm so, happy to be here. I'm fine. Yeah, we're very <laughs> happy to have you. Um, uh, you are you are a graduate, and yes. you, you work. You currently work as working as a principal assistant registrar. Okay, yeah. Okay, so she works in a higher institution. Uh, yes. Exactly at the French, French Badagri. Yeah, Nigerian French language village Badagri. French Badagri. Yeah. yeah, so she works there as an assistant registrar. The principal registrar. registrar, yes, very close to the position of a registrar. Yes. Rightly, nicely. Okay, so would you want to give us a background story about um, what you think, like what is what is knowing the will of God? What is it to, to know the will of God to marry before you get married? Okay, that's a very good question. And do you know that personality counts in the will of God? Personality counts in the will of God. And personality is the totality of your attitude towards God and towards yourself. So if you don't know yourself first and you don't know God, you can't start knowing the will of God. You need to know that you as an individual, you are a kind of person like this. You're maybe temperamentally a choleric, a melancholic, a whatever. Then know God. It's when you know God, you will be able to fix, fix yourself to where you will be useful. Because you know what? God is our creator. He has our manual. Yes. And more of God we know, and more, more of ourselves will be revealed to us. If we don't get your personality divine in God, you can't start knowing his will. So those that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Yes. You understand? Yes. They shall be strong. If you don't know your God, 
you can't know how strong or how weak you are, and you can't know you can't establish establish a relationship with him to know his will. Mm -hmm. We know the will of somebody because we know the attitude and character of that person. You can only know the will of God when you are closer to him. And if you wait in marriage before you start knowing the will of God, you will make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. The will of God starts in your day-to-day -day activities, the way you relate with God, how he speaks to you on the matters, on daily matters that concern you. And that issue of born again is what you cannot shy away from. Yes. If you don't know your God, you cannot have a way of expressing his will because you don't know the will of the one that you are confessing. A lot of our youths today, they, just, they are just carried away by the fantasy of being a church worker or being born into Christianity. Yes knowing the content of that christianity who am i in this christendom if you can define yourself your place in god your personality who he wants you to be how he wants you to relate with people and his will will be made known to you in that process one who am i i know myself who is this god it's my savior it's my lord it's my creator it's my god if you can get that solved out and you understand all this. And you now establish a relationship with him. That when you want to go out at the time, he said, don't go out. You can sit down and say, God said, I should not go out. You want to read something. God said, no, don't do that. Do this. At that preliminary level, you have established a will that is governing your day-to-day -day activities. So when it now comes to your relationship, that your relationship life, he says, this is the person you want to marry. It won't be new to you because it would have told you to do something that is not palatable. You would have gone to do it and you see that the end is okay. Because normally if God says this is your husband, it doesn't always look good. Let me tell you. It doesn't always look acceptable. It doesn't always look like the dream you have at the back of your mind. That ecstasy you have created, that environment of livelihood that I don't want to go through what my parents went through. I, be, I want a better life than that of my parents. You understand? You have created a paradise in your dream, in your imagination, in your life. So, but if you know the will of God, you will know that every pointer, everywhere he points you to, we correlate with that dream you have. So the paradise may not be clear enough as you think. So knowing the will starts with you. If you know who you are, and you know who God is in, in you, he runs your day-to-day -day, day -day activities with you. Then when it comes to relationship, it just flows like a normal thing. But when you want to wait till that day of marriage, you will get it wrong. Mm. I hope somebody's listening and they are getting what I'm saying. Yes. He said, and this book of law shall not depart from your mouth. Book of Joshua chapter one, verse eight. In it, you shall meditate day and night. Then it shall be well with you. Then you shall have good success. Do you know the, you see the gradual progression of it? Yes. That when you have a relationship with God, it's just like you, you are eating every day. If you don't, if you want to sustain yourself, you just must eat. If you don't eat, you at a time, you, the energy will be sapped out. If you don't feel your relationship life with Jesus, you don't get it right with him. You don't have a, you have not filled, uh, what's it called, the gap between you and God. Because, you know, he said, as he is, so we are in the world. Between that word and getting it, is like killing the gap. And the more of God you know, the more his will he reveals to you. So you don't get to the, um, the junction of marriage and start looking for the will. The will has to live with you as a Christian. The will has to be in assistance with you before you get to the point of marriage. The will has to be in your attitude. It has to be in your character. It has to be in your career. It has to be in your thinking. Yeah. I think somebody is getting something. Yes. That's, those are great, great points about how to know the will of God in marriage. And this that's really simplified. I, I want to believe that people have understood this, that it does not start from marriage. You don't start to hear from God only at the point of marriage. It starts before. We have already started the relationship with God. Now, let's let's say, okay, so how do you how did you know that, like how did you meet him? Let's say, how did you meet him? Naturally, yes, the way I met my husband, it was, uh, you know, we have our retreats, just like other churches, we have their retreats. Yeah, so we present that you are, you are part of CAC, right? Christ Apostolic. Yeah, yeah, Christ Apostolic Church. So we have our Easter retreat. Okay. So at the Easter retreat, all the youths are there, you know, and he is just a young pastor coming with his own church. My church is a district head. 
So we are receiving them. So if we were just doing our normal program, and there is a way God speaks to me personally, which I said, if you establish it, it will be easier for you. Yes. Coming from the way God speaks to me, I just, I sat down in the midst of the choir and he was there preaching. And I saw it like a word of knowledge coming to me. That is your husband. That was in April of 2022. Uh, yes, April of 2022. 2002, sorry, April of 2002. So when I... I received that word of knowledge. I was like, I wasn't here for that. So I shut it down. So I said, no, I can't be thinking carnally when everybody is spiritual. But I know it was the spirit of God that spoke to me. So I just shut it down. And two, it isn't in the way of our doctrine as a church for the lady to receive first before the man. Yeah. You understand? Yes. For the lady, even if you receive first, isn't it? Is it? Is not in the doctrine that you will go ahead and meet or establish the fact that you have received a will. So I have received a signal, and I have to now start working on that signal. It's a signal that I that is connected to the way God speaks to me. But I need to be sure God has. He said, "Once have I spoken, twice have I heard. That all glory belong to God." Yeah. So I've heard. So I took it as an assignment God is giving to me. I look at him once and I took off my eyes and said, God, I'm giving it, I'm taking it as an assignment. Yeah. So along the line, we had some other programs. So whenever I want to table my I, my day-to-day -day activities, activities before God, I table that point. God, you show me this man. Yeah. Establish your will in this direction. I don't want a situation whereby I will do something that is against us. I know the kind of person I want to marry. Yes. I do, you, just, you are just showing me this man, that this is the man. I need to know that what you want me to do. How you want me to go about this. If truly you have said this, communicate it to him also. So that we'll get to know what we are doing. So I forgot it. But it, it formed part of, because of course it's part of my prayer that God, I will not make the, take the right, right step. But I've never given God, this is the type of man I want. It must be light complexion. That's most of the mistakes we make. It must be a graduate. It must be this. It must be. I didn't give him that standard. Mm. I just give God a man after your own mind. If it's a man after your own mind, no matter what, since your will is in my will, it will fit in into my specification. So, Ma, um, can, can I ask a few questions? Uh, okay. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, I just wanted to know before you actually met your husband, did okay. you ever? um was it do you have any preference towards marrying a pastor or not like did you ever think i will i can marry a pastor or you never like the idea of marrying a pastor but if we want to weigh the percentage is between let's say 40 60. oh because so so I, you had no, so it was an I, option I, I, it was because, yes because one i love my privacy so much and do, being a pastor, you can't have a privacy. It's not that you will not have a privacy, but there are some aspects of your life that will be open to people coming in and going out. I want to be in the whole building, lock myself up. Nobody feels I am assisting there. I just do my things and go about my way. But this is not the type of life I live. Imagine I was just going on my way recently. Somebody called me and gave me a certification of myself. And I never know him from me. I know you. I know your name. I know your husband. I know you. I know this. I, he was like, you from where? He said, you can't know me, but I know you. I'm a, your friend on Facebook. I said, God, this privacy is not bad. So 40, 60, let's say, I never give it a consideration that ah, well, I'll be a pastor's wife because I am a career person. I love my career so much. I want somebody that I will hold the hand, will run the career around. Go. Although <laughs> that's what work is too. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a career on its own. But, you know, it's out of spirituality, the spiritual touch of it and the limitation touch of it. And uh, I don't know, but you know that there are some things you want to do. He said, but because this life that I'm living, Galatians 2.20, I am no longer living, living it for myself now, but I'm living it for Christ who loves me and has died for me. You have to streamline, streamline your excesses. 
you have to live for others at times as person. So it's 40, 60. It wasn't a consideration at all. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I was just wondering because a lot of uh a lot of people on our group, for example, they they have the preference that they don't want to get married to a Pastor. pastors. So oh, that's wow. why I'm just I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm just okay. asking that whether you are one of those and you change your mind because of mm-hmm. God's leading. Yeah. But yeah, and I wanted to ask another question. Um so I did at that time where you saw him and you got that leading, uh, mm-hmm. did you, is it, was it somebody new to you or you already knew him already from before? Yes, I already knew him. You know, it's, our church is a district head. So the oh, okay. church is on our districts, but they come, you know, it's just like the activities when you see pastors, they come around for activities in our church. So just like the scene, I've gone for a debate and whatever in his church also. So it's not the closeness of talking, it's the closeness of a pastor talking, you know? Okay. So from that um, superiority level to the inferiority level, you know, it's always there that uh, this thing is... Um, <laughs> your but, video um, man is cutting off your face. <laughs> you said? Your video <laughs> man is cutting off your face, kind of. Ah, okay. <laughs> Can you raise it a little? Yeah, okay. okay. Nice. Yeah. So it's just that... I, it's not the friendship type. The, the type I want is that I want a friend that I've been so used to, that I've been so close to the world at hand. Along the line, we'll be friends for we'll God for two years. We'll do another one. You understand? It, does, it didn't just come that way. <laughs> <laughs> it okay. didn't come that way. <laughs> it wasn't the one I, want, I will be a friend. I will know him, know what he wants, what he likes, all those. No. Although the courtship was there. Two yeah. years courtship, along the line. Yeah, two years. Yeah. Two full years. Yes, two full years. Yes, two full years. Was it tough or was it easy? It was between tough and easy. Holy Spirit made made it easier. (laughs) Why would you say it was tough? The tough part of this is is, is that, you know, there is distance. And so this is a person I don't really know. And that's why, as a lady, you need to solve the issue of security. If you have security issues, I, why, what do I mean by security issues? If you have trust issues, don't marry a pastor. Hmm. Okay. Don't trust him. <laughs> why? Trust. Hello? <laughs> why? Yes, you see a lady sitting beside your husband, you feel he's dangerous. You feel somebody is talking. So it's just, if you have trust issues, don't even think. Don't dare. Do you know how many times the pastor will be away on assignment and you'll be at home? So you are, that's why I said you need, to, you need to solve a lot of security issues and be secure in God that whatever he has given you, nobody can take away, not even the devil. So if you solve that aspect of security issue, that you are, your life is secure in Christ, well, no matter who your husband is ministry along or if that female or male, you know the personality of God in that husband, and you help him to maintain a spiritual standard that is high enough to be disciplined, to be to surround himself with things that will not bring him down. By all means, that's it. That's it. If you are not secured, don't don't marry a person. Don't you will be jealous, you will be envious, you will be arrogant, you will be abusive if you have security issues. Because you believe that he's abusive, okay. Yeah, you think he will give he's giving more of the attention to those people, people that are not suffering with him, people that are not um, people that are not praying with him, people that are not sharing his pains with him. He's using most of the time with them. You understand? So you have to solve that security and trust issue. If you solve it with the help of the Holy Spirit, he keeps on telling you. I had had his words today, he said it like this, it just to my mind, just like this, you will have it all at the end. And sincerely, wow. it's coming true. It's but during the time true. you, during the time of your courtship, did you have any like fears in your mind? Yes, I had fears. Any? Okay. Fears of the unknown. How I, I know that is a pastor now. I know it's, that is a child of God now. How can we make sure that he remains who he says he is to him? You know, human beings, we have the tendencies of changing. And that's why if you look wow. at the future... Even for a pastor? 
<laughs> my brothers, nobody is secured forever. You see people are falling. That's why you need to solve that aspect. So mm. this, there is no, that's why I said that's what security is. It's very, very pregnant. It has a lot of things in it. You know he's a child mm. of God. You know he has a bundle of temperament himself. You know he has a bundle of things he's coming from. The home is coming from. The people, the relationship, past relationships that he has had. So you need to help. So in that, um, that fear of the unknown was that I don't, I'm married to a man of God. I'm married to a child of God. Am I sure I'm going to help him to be a child of God to the end? Should he do something? He has his own character. Should he do something that I do not like? Will I still be able to love him? Will I still be able to stay with him? The fear is there. So, and the fact that, should I need something and he's not able to provide for me? Hmm. Will he still, will I, right? Yes, will I still be able to? Will I still be able to? So the only thing I now realize is that when I was on this, God gave me Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Fear not, fear not for I am with you. <clears throat> be not this way, for I will be your Lord. I will hold your right. Even if you are passing through fire. And I said, God, you are telling me there will be fire on the way. <laughs> Even if you are passing through storm. I said, God, this, I, it was, recently I was analyzing the word he gave me. He said, remember the word. I, and that was my uncle, my sister, my brothers. That was my uncle. He told me, he said, read back that word I gave to you again. I said, Even though thou pass through fire, I will be with you. Though, those thou, do, uh, though thou pass through waters, they will not shadow you. He said, he said, it may not be financial problem. It may be emotional. And that's why a lot of time you see the past, pastor's idea. You don't think that they have depression problems. You don't think mm. that they have emotional problems. You don't know that they have, they are, they, at times they want to pray. They just stay there. They can't say anything. You just see the tears running down. So you have to be emotionally balanced to help somebody in that situation. So the challenge is there, but Holy Spirit was there also. And because Holy Spirit is there, the challenge was not unsurmountable. The challenge was really, really part of the, you know, when you are driving a car, the brake, the clutch, everything, and the brakes, when they come, every other thing comes along and God is faithful. So the challenge is worrying much other than the fear of the unknown. Okay. You understand? We are coming from, he is from Osho State, as in he has lived all his life. In Osho State, I live all my life in in, in Lagos. Okay. It's just that he came to Lagos 2001, so I need to do a background check on him. <laughs> I have had mm -hmm. one a lot of background. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have done a lot of background check. I'm telling you, okay. you don't take you don't take a man as a bondu. Yeah, no. he has presented you. The bondu may be very very beautiful. Let the Holy Spirit help you to do a background check and you to do a physical background check, please. So you, this you went to make, re, re, you, did you go to ask, you are, you are muted, okay? Yes, yes. I, 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 I like that, I like that, that point you just made and the yes. issue of doing a background check. Yes. Are you yes. saying that as a Christian, you should not just only rely on what the, the man said or the man said, but you yes. should go physically to investigate for yourself to yes. reassure yourself that what is telling you is right. Mm. Yes. yes. I went ahead to meet the senior pastor. Okay. Who I have known for a long, a long time. Yes. You understand? So yes. that senior pastor, uh, we related, I asked a lot of some questions. And I allowed them to establish a contact with the parents. Mm, okay. You understand? Yes. I established a contact with the parents. The parents are fine, if it. So along the line, I knew that he's a pastor born by a pastor. Okay. The parents are, too, are into the ministry, too, but I didn't take that for granted. Okay. I didn't want, a, a, I didn't want the man I will manage. I want the man I will love. So if though he was from a pastor's family background as background, that was not enough. Um, it wasn't enough. Wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't do, I didn't want to marry a man I will manage all my life. I will hmm. cope with all my life. I want a man I will love. Wow. Okay. This is a so strong I, 
I have to. So when the pastor told me what he, he said, I don't want the pastor to say it because they are colleagues and because he's taking him as his own child. Yes. I said, okay, I want to I want to see your mom. I want to visit your mom. When it was down that it may be a reality. You understand? Yeah. So I lay out to the pastor. Then I went to the mom. So we had a conversation. I was, as we were talking, I was noting some things. You know, deep collection is deep. Yes. <laughs> so I was looking at some connections that we have. I was looking at the, some things that we have in common. Things that would help me, even if this man is emotionally down. Will I see somebody around me, around him, that can help him, if I can help him? If this man doesn't want to listen to me, can I see somebody around him that I can talk to? Yeah, that he will your listen? support system. Hmm. Your support yes. system. Now, after doing the check, and I felt the check was okay. And every, at every junction, I was asking the Holy Spirit to help me. Because if you go with the strength of a man and with what you see, those things you see as fan fantasies, they may take you off guard. Yes. But you are not living with the family, you are living with the man. Yes. The man came as a bundle, I have received it as a gift. Yes. But I want to unwrap everything that is around him so that I will know the gift is tangible. Mm. Wait, wait, ma. You keep saying bundle. Can you break yes. that down? What does bundle I mean? Bundle as a pastor, gifted, awesome. You need to see this man, you don't see him. <laughs> awesome. Okay. He, he has... <laughs> <laughs> he has things that as far as I wish they could I wish they could see him. <laughs> Abby, I wish they could see him. Oh, he has gone somewhere. He has gone somewhere. What? Another he time we'll have you and him together. Do you see the sacrifice he paid to make sure this happens? Uh -huh. So, you know, he was a bundle in the sense that I just I just you know I don't want to see I see something that is good. But it's unpleasant. Good in the sense that in the promise of God, this man is good. But in the pleasantness of how much he has, what he wants to give me, the future he has to offer, it's unpleasant. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very deep. <laughs> Do you see the, wow. the bundle now? Yeah, yes, yes. so we should be put on the stand sisters when they when they come in contact with a brother that mm -hmm. says or a brother or a pastor, whoever it is, that mm -hmm. coming that, that proposes to them and he says that is the will of God. But when mm -hmm. they look at what this man is going to offer, it's unpleasant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'm listening. It's unpleasant. You know, many a times these sisters that see these men that will come or this brother that will come, all that, and then they, they look into what is going to offer and it's unpleasant. Mm -hmm. And they maybe share, open up their minds or say uh, the unpleasantness they see mm -hmm. in deep bundle. They, they mm -hmm. are categorized as materialistic Hello. or faithless. Hello. Or, mm. or, 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 or lovers of money, you know, you money. know that. Yes. I understand. And yeah. not, or not realistic about the, the, the fears natural, a natural man, a natural woman should have when she's, because she knows that this should be a journey for life. Yes. So right. this is a journey for life. Are you to come into an unpleasant relationship? Are you to come into something that is hard for you to mm. take? No. So I, I, I'm, I'm just, so what you're saying is that it's natural for us to feel that this person, What's fear? yes, mm. it's unpleasant. Mm -hmm. It's natural to be afraid. And that will make you less of a Christian, less of a believer. No, less of Christian. We are created with instincts. And that's why at times when you want to go out, you have the feelings that something bad wants to happen. For every journey in life, your instincts will always tell you. Mm. But when you train your instinct, instinct by the Spirit of God, it gives you the right signal. This man, ask this question from him. This man, check this out. 
let me give you an example. Be, be, because you've driven your car out yesterday and you want to drive it out today, do you mean that you just take your keys and go and start driving without checking it? Even on our salvation, we check it every day if it is there intact. Because what we do every day interfere with our salvation. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that a lady is having the fear that will he have the money to give me? Will he? And that's why as a lady, when you are going in there, be ready. I want to be a pastor's wife. I want to be a support system. I want to be an helpmate. Then I have to be financially okay. Emotionally. Okay. We are always looking at the man, that the man must bring the money. It's not always the case in pastor's house. <laughs> this, is a, this is a strong point. Okay, very strong point. So a woman that wants to marry a pastor must know yeah. that there will be time when she would have to be able to support financially. Hey, so a pastor's the wife should remember if you are getting big legs to a pastor, you should have yeah. something doing. Doing. Have something tangible doing. I've been working now for 13 years. Okay. And let me tell you, there are a lot of times I work for people, not for myself. People who do not know their background, people who do not know where they are coming from, they want to pay fees, they want to do a lot of things. We leave our own needs and we stick cater for their needs. There are times I will cook for a lot of people before going to work and after coming back from work. I still, yes, I still do that. Now they are reduced to like two or three, then before they are up to 10. Yes, and at times it's out of my money. At times, you, later I will reimburse. Later I will give. The, you know, when you are expecting it like a microwave, let it come now. A pastor's life is not now. A pastor's life is on miracle. A pastor's life is on God's support, not on man's support. A pastor's life is Boma, on... Boma. Yes, please. <clears throat> At the end of the day, you are still a, a, a person. Don't you mm -hmm. feel tired sometimes because you always have to take care of everybody else and but, how many people are taking care of you don't you feel tired <laughs> sometimes like ah this thing eh, is is <laughs> uh, uh, am i sure i did the right thing don't you get tired sometimes as a human being what do they do to spare tires <laughs> they don't okay. spare tires That's what they are like spare tires it is when you are needed they call for you they just oh, you pastor's know, wife has spare tires. They are like spare tires. They are like okay. But if wow. that spare, if you if you play with that spare tire, your car will you not are in danger. You are stuck. If you yeah, play with that spare tire, and that's why you need they work. You see us. They call us people working at the background to put the platform in shape. Hmm. People working at the background to put a platform in shape. If it's just the opportunity I have to come up, some pastors have they have never gone, they have never touched the pulpit all their lives, and they have been the one dressing the pastor, holding the pastor. <laughs> they have never wow. had to hold the microphone. So if we say, "Mommy, shout hallelujah," at times you will not even see how to shout hallelujah because you'll be forgotten in the kitchen. At times you get tired. <laughs> At times we get tired, we get unseen, we get unnoticed. We feel like we are unappreciated. Unappreciated. At times, some people will say, Ah, mommy, is this all you can do? They will mm -hmm. even eh? put some thought on the injury. Wow. And some people will even tell you, This is not how pastors will behave. Oh. You, should, uh, you should upgrade yourself. You just need to now look at yourself in the mirror of the word of God. What is the thing, the assignment God has given me? Is it is that the assignment I'm doing? If Holy Spirit say yes, go ahead. So you would have some instances that you will feel tired, you'll feel weary, you will feel like you are doing all and nobody appreciates it. But let me tell you, there will be a time when you don't know that Holy Spirit sees it all. Yes. Everything will just come in seamlessly. The children education, you you yourself, you are you can be a witness. The way the education will go, even when you least expected it, you will see it going. You will see your own career. My the God has been so faithful with my career. I'm telling you, so so faithful with my career. You understand? And the ministry will just start moving on its own. You don't need to be appreciated. That is it. Do it for God. 
If you do it as unto God, the gain will come. If you do it to be appreciated, you get tired. And that emotional aspect of it is the most terrible of all. People can see you physically, but they don't know what you are, what is running you down emotionally. Yeah. And sincerely speaking, you need to rely totally on the word of God. Especially when you have people around your husband that want to take more of you, more of him, more of the gift he has. Huh. What he has to offer without even looking at the inconveniences. There are times it will be off the pulpit. I will be so strong that it will be as if I'm carrying him to, to go and you understand somebody that they've used all the strength and the next day he needs to go up and, and minister again. So there are a lot of times that the tiredness will come, the weariness will come. In short, it comes with a lot of disappointment on the part of people that should know better and they don't know better. But when the Holy Spirit says, go ahead, it gives the support, it gives the comfort, it gives the joy. That's what we stand on. That's what we stand on. Mm. So have you ever had uh, to deal with um, temptation? A woman oh. want to get pull your husband down. How do you handle that? The very first that I, you know, we had a discussion on our weaknesses, areas that we need to watch our backs. During, the court, the during your courtship? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that has helped. I know where I'm weak. And, and he told me three areas of his life that anytime you see this going this way, block it by all means. Okay. Do you understand it? Yes. And that has been the secret. Okay. So, that so there's a place, there is a, what would help a pastor's wife, a, a, a to be pastor's wife, to function properly, openness. Openness oh, between you as a, as a couple. So the pastor should accept, should be weak, naked in front of his wife. Let's put it that way. Naked yes. emotionally, naked in every form. Everything. So make it about their past. Don't hide anything from your partner because that's the only way that person can be a real helpmate for you, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So he was so open enough to tell me the areas I need to look at. Now I was open enough to tell him the areas he needs to look at. Okay. So in our, at our early days, there used to be a very good woman that would come and not so married, would come into our house for counseling. Because it's a small church, we were still... Not, we, still not have, we didn't have office at that time. Yes. So it has to be at the parlor, at the living room that we will come in. This woman will sit virtually almost naked. You know, there is a way a woman will sit, you will close your lap. <laughs> but this one will sit almost very naked. Hmm. And my husband will now sit in front of her, talking, looking at her in the face. You understand? Yes. yes. Wanting to look elsewhere. So when I come in, I see the scene. The first day, I, the first time I used the table in the living room to cross the leg of the woman. <laughs> Make her adjust the seat. Oh, madam, please, can you uh, kindly adjust your leg? And wow. I saw that it was intentional. Mm. So I saw that it was intentional. And he saw that it was intentional. And he had, so at that time, we couldn't stop her from coming. But we made her know that we are together. We know what you are there for. So she stopped coming by herself. Okay. Secondly, we never accuse her of wanting to tempt us because it can raise another guy elsewhere. Yes. It can look for somebody better or somebody smaller or younger. But what we just did was that whatever problem she came for, God help us to address it. We allow her to go. I will talk to her. We we'll sit down at times on the ground. We we'll laugh and laugh and laugh at things that she said during the counseling that could affect us and that could negatively work against us. We we'll discuss, we we'll pray about it, and we we'll close it up there. The other time, anything connected to that, when we identify an enemy, we don't fight on, we don't have the enemy physically. When we identify, we make sure we identify based on the areas we have highlighted. Mm -hmm. I'm weak in this area, I'm weak in this area, I'm weak in this area. When the, when the area is coming up and we understand, immediately I pick the signal, I pick the signal. 
we start walking towards it. We secretly walk against that enemy, and before you know it, the enemy goes away by himself or herself. So communication, if there's a communication gap between the pastor wife and the pastor, there's going to be a lot of temptations. They will not be able to fight. Mm. Mm. It's like, it's like um, oil in the wheel of a vehicle. It, it will always come. It will always come. But when the two of you have an agreement as to what can be seen as your weakness and your strength, the two of you will work it out and you will not go beyond that. He said, if you know a banana is what triggers you up yeah. and will make you do something bad, run away from it immediately, you see it come. <laughs> so we don't say we are bigger than temptation. We don't even move closer to it. That's it. I don't want to say by the, by the grace of God, I will jump over this thing. When Jesus Christ was to jump, why not jump? Did he, not, didn't he have the power to jump? He said, no, 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 no. He said he has given his angel charge over you. Jump now. He has the power to jump. So we don't take temptation as something we have power to summon. Let me go and face it. No. When we see it, it's between the weakness we have highlighted, we don't go for it at all. We don't move closer to it at all. The temptation is always so, there for people. Okay? I have a question. Um, so now you mentioned one uh, example of this uh, sister that was trying to seduce him. Mm -hmm. Now, have you had any situation where they try to blackmail him, like saying that he is interested in them and so and so, just to get you really, um, you know, derailed. Okay. Yeah. I one thing he 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 asked me to do when we wanted to get married is that is to create fence around him, mm. and that fence is we don't have any female secretary. We don't have any female interpreter other than myself if I want to interpret for him. Anything can bring that type of uh, blackmail. Uh -huh. We move it away. Hmm. The only one that is very close that would have happened was a thing the old church taught by themselves that this is the lie. This because of course he doesn't shake, he doesn't shake his he told he calls himself all that old time pastor. He doesn't shake hand with a woman. That's the extent to which he, <laughs> he doesn't shake and you know it's not that he's not educated, but he, he said, let's create a fence because he said it's not easy for a man of God to overcome scandal. Mm -hmm. If you have any reason to go through a scandal, they would have put a point, a dot on the illness of your genuity. Mm. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. That scandal should not be... So anything that can bring scandal like this is like, um, you know when ambulance is coming, what does it come with? Come with the sound. Yeah. It'll be blaring. Yeah. Yeah. It's that can bring scandal that we'll see around us. The, the siren in our house, <laughs> that spiritual siren, we'll just try to bring it to bear to make it start blowing. So we not we didn't have anything close to scandal because he had created a fence of not having women around him, not having church money around. You know, it's beyond women. Mm -hmm. Church money. Yes. Um, yes. No, not taking things that do not belong to him not going to places, visitation, it doesn't go alone. Mm. Be you a woman or a man? Because you had had issues that people have set camera down and they will ask you to visit and they come out naked to you and you don't know, you just go there. So when he wants to go visit, no matter the urgency of the visitation, it goes with somebody. So you create a okay. fence around your husband as a pastor's wife to help him overcome some scandal. Yes. Mm. Okay, and um, now let's 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 switch it up a little bit. I want to talk about romance. Some people, oh, okay. especially for young my generation, you know, romance is very very important. important. So, as a as a a mommy of a lot of young adults, um, that are looking, okay, they have the option of a, a pastor to marry. Should they expect? that romance exists or is is it something that um they will just bear in mind that 
when it comes it to that side, it doesn't happen. <laughs> that's why it's the woman being for God's sake. <laughs> okay. So, you know, <laughs> before I got married, I had to read every woman. Yeah. And even the mom, as they have their own too to read. Yeah. So, if you feel that if there is no romance, Songs of Solomon will not be in the Bible. <laughs> right? <laughs> Isn't it so? Yeah. <laughs> so the only thing is the atmosphere of romance is not created in your fantasy before you get married. Yeah. It's created when you get married. You can't say because you marry a pastor, somebody is sitting in the east and somebody is sitting in the north. You understand? Yes. <laughs> hey, marrying a pastor doesn't make you <laughs> doesn't make the two of you feel like you should one should be like um the big boss and the other one is a tiny one no uh-huh. it's like the two of you coming together under the grace of god to make the love of god know the more so you feel like putting your head on your husband's shoulder if you didn't say anointing will not permit what type of anointing is that, that <laughs> So it's even <laughs> the fact that you know Christ calls for the closeness, the closeness in prayer. When you hold your hand in prayer, you hold each other's hand in prayer. It's 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 one way. Do people just feel that romance is something you will start co- cultivating? It's something you build. Yes. It's something mm. you build over time. You can't say because some of some of us sisters they are not as spiritual as they are when they come in. When they come into a relationship, they go and. You can imagine somebody on on a wedding night. She's still well dressed like that, and dressed like from head to toe on a wedding night. Dressed <laughs> eh? is, is are you? <laughs> you are laughing. No, it, first being a pastor does not take the romance out of it. In short, it's helps it because it's not getting it from anywhere. It's getting it from only you. Why will you now? I'm, 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 I must say I'm enjoying this. You are very real. You are saying it as it is. So I just want to say that uh, I'm really enjoying this and I'm learning a lot because a lot of people have misconception thinking that uh, because you're a pastor's wife now, ah, it's going to be very not romantic, very, um, very straightforward, no, no, no playfulness. Ah, no, no, no. no. So, <laughs> it's not so, you. I tell you. Play, we run around. It couldn't. It can be funny at times. The children will be like, <laughs> at times we we'll watch things on our phone. They say, come, 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 come. I say something. We'll, and it's so funny that we we'll laugh and sit on the ground. Is it okay, this? So, what else? I, I also <laughs> want to add another another question to this. Now you've talked about romance in mm-hmm. your in your privacy. Is, is it something that also applies to the public or it is strictly um, because, for example, there are some brethren that when they are going to church, for example, mm. husband is in the south, mm. wife is in the north. Ah. <laughs> so, so. Well, I'm the, married, they cannot hold her and south side. <laughs> okay. When they were joined together, they were publicly joined together. Isn't this so? Yes. Mm-hmm. That's why we are joined together in the presence of the church. And they will hand the hand of the wife over to the hand. Is it not so? They will put the hand on the hand. That you can hold this command anywhere you are going. Yes. I remember before we had the vehicle, when we are going on the road, it just holds my hand to cross me to the other side of the road. Hallelujah. He <laughs> holds the hand. There are a lot of times that have saved me from falling because I'm the type that walk mm. in a hurry. I don't look down. Okay. I'll just walk in a hurry. And the fact that he, he held my hand by, with his own hand, by the time I want to fall, he just use the other hand to hold up. So why will you be married and say, oh, at times we'll go to a tree when we feel like. Mm. When I'm tired of cooking, it takes me to the tree at times. Yeah. Only I can be more funny. There are, if, you, if I'm eating here, don't ask me for food and tell me again. I want the hand. It takes me to the eating. So, so basically, that's 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 dates. You're going for dates. Yes. 
I'm just using I'm just using young people's terms. Yes. So you're going for date night yes, or date. To renew our, our whatever to renew. Okay. We hmm. we go at times. It, 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 it will it will be like there is a camp we normally go to for prayers, but we of the children. You know when children interfere with a lot of things, you may not be able to to renew the communication that we ought to have at home. But we can't have when children are there. We go to a place that's very quiet. So the fact that hmm. I pretty sure you know that marriage brings you closer. So you don't you don't see that your husband you don't start uh, um, showing that. I can't hold this. I, I just told my husband today, I said, why is it that a man will marry a woman and you will not be able to hold the hand of that woman? Why is it that you will marry a woman and you will not, and you will not say, this, uh, where is your wife? And you will just be using the tip of your finger to say, this is my wife. That is, you should be able to drag her close and say, this is my wife. Because, of course, when Adam, uh, Eve was to be removed, he was removed from where? From the region. Showing the closeness, the level of the closeness. So, by the pastor, you, you know what our temperaments play a lot. That's why I said I should know your temperament. There are some people they are so they are so choleric to the extent that everything is like a soldier. There are some people they are so phlegmatic in the sense that they keep to themselves their journey. So the only thing is when a lady wants to marry, don't marry the same temperament as you. Mm -hmm. mm. And is let me tell you now, please, brethren, know that there is no part when they say the will of God is not cast in stone. Yes. So don't put yourself under depression because a man says is your is I am the will of God for you. If you don't have the character to sustain the will of God, then look for the will of God in God Himself. Ma, please repeat that again. Repeat it again. Repeat. It. <laughs> repeat that again. I, I said the will That's of God is powerful. not. Cast the will of God is not cast in stone. Mm -hmm. As you are now, I can't say that it's only a leg that is meant for me. The character fits in, the, his character fits into the will of God for me. Mm. It's not cast in stone. And that's why a lot of people are dying under the body of a very hard man, very mm. merciless man. And they said, this man said, it's the will of God. I can't run away. No. Before you, I read yesterday, you know, I do a lot of counseling in marriage. A lady said, I have to call off my wedding. Because three days of my wedding, I was asking my husband for money for all the things you need to do for the wedding. The man said, my money is in fixed deposit. He has not put anything into the wedding. So she went for counseling. The counselor said, call off this wedding. Because it will not put, if you can't put anything in the wedding, you will not put anything in the marriage. In the marriage. That's right. Please say it louder for them. If he, he cannot off, put anything in the wedding, he cannot put anything he, in the marriage. He put, he, she had to come off the wedding. So the will of God is not cast in stone. Don't be under the burden of somebody coming with the will of God and he does not have the character to sustain the will of God. Mm. The will of mm. God is sustained by the character of God, not character of the devil. Mm. Not mm. not jealous, not add ash, add, being ash on your wife. No. Mm. Please. The will of God even comes with that romance, self. Eh? <laughs> Don't now say the will, of, hey, the will of God does not come and slap. The will of God does not come and curse. <laughs> the will of God does not come and throw you anywhere and say, if you talk, people will know that you are a Christian. And you will, mm. somebody will die, just like our sister that we lost recently. Yes. The will of God is not cast in stone. The will of God is sustained by the character of God, the personality of God. If he does not have the character of God, he should not claim the will of God. Just like the sister, too, if they don't have the character of God, the virtuous, the virtuous woman character in Proverbs 31, they should not claim the will of God. So please, it's very beautiful to dwell in the will of God, but it's good, very excellent to sustain it by the character of God. Wow. Wow. This is, this is great. Thank you so much for, for being so real. So um, what, I just have a quick question. What is the number one thing that you love about your husband? That's like a it's sincerity. It's sincerity. It's sincerity. Sincerity. Sincerely, I can tell you that's what helped me. He is himself. If he asks money, he said, I have money. If he doesn't have money, he said, I don't have money. 
And that at times slaps me in the face. I said, why can't you just say that? He said, I don't have now, but God will provide. Mm. The sincerity is so down to head that along the line, I get my bearing. Even when I know that things are coming are very huge, I cannot stand. Because sincerely, it's so handsome that behind that handsomeness, you, don't, you can't believe that there are some things you need to help him with. And that's why we need to know that as lady, we have to we have some things to help our men with. They have a lot of things emotionally, a lot of things physically, a lot of things spiritually. But it's so sincere that when it comes, I say, yes, this is my man. Let's hold our hands together and get it done. So that's one thing I think I appreciate more, so much about it, so much about it. And he has kept him to be a child of God. Good. Thank you very much, very, very much for all of these um, nuggets that you have given to us. And that's an encouragement to as many as are thinking of marrying a pastor or God is leading you to a pastor. You have the experience of um, the pastor's wife here who has shared her own experience. And as she said, she's God does a lot of counseling. So we'll have her again another time for, <laughs> for more uh, if, um talks about, you know, singles, women, you know, what to do, what to expect, you know, how to prepare for a marriage, how to be the right woman, you know. She said she's a career woman too, so, yes. and, you know, what it means to be a career woman. We're going to talk about that another time also. How do you manage or balance out your life as a career woman with the life, your life as a pastor's wife? You know, that's another topic that we need to talk about. Another time we will be inviting, I hope everybody enjoyed this uh, this video, this uh, live, this discussion, and this expository. I don't know if I'll call it that. So if, do you have any other questions, any other comments, every other person who wants to chime in? Uh, for me personally, I really, really enjoyed it. And I didn't expect that you will come out so down to earth and tell us the real thing. <laughs> I was like, okay, how can I... How can I get her to actually tell us <laughs> what is is like to marry a pastor? But thank you so much because um, you really opened up to us. Not everyone will be willing to do that. And um, hopefully also, we already said that we'll talk about career sometime mm -hmm. soon. But also, you mentioned a few things about submission. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is another topic oh, that... Another you will you will perhaps break down for us on another day so but thank you so much for your time Ma. we really appreciate we know that you are you are the mother of all and uh, all your children will be waiting for you now yes. so we really appreciate you yeah yeah thank you. thank you for the time and i want to this last word encourage all ladies willing to marry a pastor that being a pastor's wife is the best thing that has ever happened to me. And they can make the journey very easy for them if they take Holy Spirit along. You can't go alone with your career. You can't go alone with your own training. Take Holy Spirit along. And if you know you have character issue, please solve it before you marry a pastor. You will need a lot of energy to suppress anger, a lot of energy to suppress jealous, a lot of energy. So if you have character issues, please work on it very well before you embark on that journey. And with Holy Spirit, everything will be fine. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for taking out the no, time no. to come and bless us with this, this conversation. Please, everyone, if you, are, you have listened to this, please put your comment. What did you learn? What did you, what is your take home from this life? And share with your friend, you know, Tell us other topics that you would want us to bring her to come and talk to you about again. And um, on this note, we'll say have a good um, evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are in the world. God bless you again. And I'm going to, I'm going to stop the, the live broadcast now and uh, I'm going to uh, call it a day. Thank you everyone on Facebook. God bless you. See you next week, Saturday. Same time, same place. We have a question. Okay, we have a question. Uh, someone okay. asked, how can we connect with her? How, how can, can we connect, connect with her? 
All right. Well, we'll put her information. She's on Facebook as well. Her name is um, We'll put it as a link for you to see her. She she's a pastor's wife from Christ Apostolic Church. See, see, and you can see she's a Christian. It's obvious. She is a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that's if you have any other question, just drop it in the comment section, or you can also write us a message, and we'll find a way to um, respond to all of your questions and inquiries. Yes. So thank you, Facebook.